Hello everybody, Brian Olson here, uh, Trina Developer Advocate, and uh, I'm going to be here to talk to you today about a pretty neat tool uh, called, called Alexio. Um, Alexio is a caching service, but I guess more broadly uh, was described as a data orchestration framework um, that allows you to kind of abstract away uh, kind of the layers of different uh, file sources as well as um, uh, allows multiple query engines to be able to interact with it and therefore kind of gives you this uh, ability to add, uh, again, a kind of layer that sits in between your uh, storage and your um, processing layer to be able to actually um, do things like caching as well as, uh, again, kind of uh, navigate and, and, and create various namespaces and, and uh, layers of abstraction so you're not having to directly interact every single processing engine you have to uh, map to every single uh, uh, f file storage and this kind of thing. So uh, so if you go to alexio.io, um, you can check out a lot of really cool stuff. They kind of talk a little bit further into data orchestration, uh, what the you know various uh, uh, iterations of the product is. And uh, then of course, you know, the very, very useful docs, which uh, I've kind of summarized for the purposes of this tutorial uh, up here in the top of kind of the things that you'll want to uh, look at. So uh, these all go to various uh, spaces in the Alexio docs. So, um, so as, as a quick introduction, you know, we, we recently did a, um, uh, a Trina community broadcast with the Alexio folks. Um, and on there, I promised you all that I was going to do this demo. So, uh, so if you are coming in totally cold from this, uh, you know, you can definitely go and check out, uh, that episode 43, it should be going live here shortly after I get this recorded. And, um, we just go into, you know, what is data orchestration caching kind of in Trino with or without, uh, Alexio. And, uh, in general, the picture kind of looks something like this. So Alexio sits kind of in between uh, the compute and storage layer. Um, you can have multiple storage layers, uh, you know, let's say S3 in multiple locations on the cloud. You might have it not just in AWS, but you might have it in a cross cloud. So it could be in uh, Google. Um, you might have a local data center like MinIO, uh, which is actually what we're going to be doing today. And then another data center using Ceph HDFS. So you have all these different potential areas that you could be storing your data. Uh, and re remember, this is kind of more thinking in the lines of object storage slash HDFS is technically file storage and block storage, but the concepts are uh, relatively, you know, they're still the same in terms of you're your moving files into this uh, kind of abstraction layer uh, for caching purposes and then abstracting away the access to all of these uh, different storage layers. And so this can, you know, come from multiple compute layers, uh, Spark. Of course, Trino Presto uh, is what we're going to be talking about today, specifically Trino. And then uh, Hi, PyTorch, TensorFlow, all these different things that can actually interact with the Luxio's uh, file space um, that can be mapped into these multiple mountings of, of different um, of different file locations. So today we're going to connect this up to, um, you know, have Alexio basically write into MinIO. I'm going to show you how to configure that. And then we're just going to do a very simple setup and I'm going to show you some of the backend stuff that's going on. So you kind of understand, uh, and have an appreciation for what Alexio is doing behind, like kind of under the covers. So our goals is that you're going to learn how to configure Alexio to point to S3 storage, uh, like MinIO. Um, and then you're going to learn how to query Alexio uh, to, with a query write through from Trino. So here's all the resources to kind of re uh, reference in the beginning. And so first step, you know, kind of let's, let's go over the actual configuration here. So, um, so we have Trino really just configured identically to the other iceberg configurations that we have. Um, and other things. So, so this, by the way, is part of the Trino getting started repo, which we'll link to uh, in the bottom of this description. And then uh, if you go under iceberg here, um, you're going to actually see, you know, a couple different things, um, particularly the Trino iceberg MinIO subfile. And this is actually a setup that, that just has Trino directly talking to uh, MinIO and using the iceberg table format. Um, hence why we are pulling this under the iceberg uh, tables here. What this 
particular uh, example is going is basically just adding Aluxio into that mix. So how does the how do the configurations differ for Trino? Well, they don't. They really Trino. The only place that Trino actually changes uh, really comes into when you're querying. So um, when you're querying, you're actually going to be using a schema that you know kind of is is uh, um, has the protocol of Aluxio, and you're actually going to include the host of the leader. Um, or in, in the Luxio terminology, it's the master node. Um, and uh, we'll basically be addressing the leader using the port 19998 and, uh, and then talking to you know the various uh, file space underneath there. And that's actually gonna be mounting directly to MinIO. So whenever we interact with Luxio, anytime we write data to, um, to the ice, or sorry, to the Alexio, uh tables, a uh, table that's pointing to the Alexio location, then um, that's going to get backed up and essentially asynchronously copied into the uh, the storage layer. So we'll go take a look at, at uh, all that as we go through here. So Trino configuration, for the most part, other than when you're actually creating the DDL, uh, the create statements, um, that's gonna be really the only time that you're gonna be adjusting anything from Trino's perspective. So the rest of it comes into the Alexio configuration. So Alexio uh, in general, uh, there's one way you could actually be, you know, running these configurations would be, and I'll, I'll, I created a little link here to this uh, page here, so you can kind of open up this Alexio-site.properties. So this actually opens you up to the uh, configuration HTML, and this is how, you know, all the different kind of things that you can do to, to set this Alexio site properties. Um, so one way we could have done this is to uh, actually create that properties file and have that sit inside of our configurations and, and throw it in there. Um, I actually ended up taking a, a different approach. So uh, in fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and just show you inside of uh, the GitHub repo. So rather than kind of having like a, a configuration file, let's say, you know, an Alexio configs file sitting inside here uh, that we could have, you know, ported in or, or copied into Alexio, uh, uh, nodes. Um, I instead just in our Docker compose, I added this, uh, Java ops, which actually allows us to overwrite the, the, um, uh, Alexio properties here. So, uh, I like this because this actually contains all of the changes that we're going to, to need for Alexio all inside of this Docker compose file. So everything you need to look from a change, uh, perspective, uh, when you're adding an Alexio, all exists inside of this Docker Compose file. Now, that's just for, th there's no advantage to doing this otherwise, really, unless, you know, so this is really just comes down to a simplicity and a, and a teaching configuration setup and not really the preferred method. Uh, so just so you, that's not confusing. So, okay, so let's actually look at these configuration properties that we've set now that we know how we set them. Um, let's look at the specific ones uh, for, for each of them. And, and I've, I've actually split this up into uh, three different sections. So we have, uh, you know, leader and follower. So this, this is for the Alexio leader and Alexio follower will have some distinct configurations and then there's shared configurations. So I wanted to split that out separately so that we're not duplicating, you know, the, the, the configurations that are going to exist in both. So the, the unique one for leader configuration is this, uh, mount table. This actually just tells you, well, once I have something mounted and, uh, and, and they call it the UFS or you'll sometimes see under FS, uh, that literally just means when we're going back to this thing right here, this, any of these that you're connecting here as through AWS S3, G GCS, um, and MinIO, Ceph, all of these, or HDFS, those are the under file systems uh, that, that, uh, that they're referring to here. So we're basically just gonna put um, the default mount uh, uh, root for um, a particular uh, file type that we're, we're mounting for Alexio to essentially write data down into. Uh, so Luxio needs is going to be holding files in memory, but it needs to be able to have like a, a file, an under file system to, to write to. So uh, it's going to expose, uh, oh yeah, and the leader will also, you know, need to be configured to expose these two ports. Uh, one's going to have the web UI, the other is going to be, I think where a lot of the RPC type stuff happens uh, would be my guess. Uh, I, don't, I don't know enough about 
to internals to actually validate that, but I'm pretty sure that would be the, my guess, my best guess. Um, and so, uh, so those are the two kind of things that, that are exposed there. So that's really all you need to know about the unique, uh, configurations for the, uh, the leader or in Alexio terminology master. And then for the follower configurations, um, also called uh, workers in, in, uh, Alexio, um, so Alexio workers, uh, or, or followers, um, will need to have basically a, a configured amount of, of, uh, disc or, or sorry, Ram, uh, that they're going to be running and storing the files and memory to. So in our, for our case, we're actually going to be, uh, you know, using the configuration of, of one gig and, uh, and then we will actually need to set in Docker there's this property called uh, shim size, which is, you know, SHM underscore size, and that's for shared memory. And that needs to correlate directly with this uh, property right here. So this is in the Alexio config saying, hey, we have a gig of shared memory. And, uh, you know, for this, it's going to be shared, you know, this, this worker is going to have a shared memory size of one gig. If you had multiple, you would have, uh, you'd want to have the, you know, shared memory, uh, uh, maybe be somewhat unique and and then kind of used across uh, multiple workers. Um, and so um, so in this case, uh, followers also kind of do a similar thing that leaders do. They have a web port as well as a kind of RPC type port. Um, and then yeah, before I skip this over, the Alexio worker host name uh, also is needs to be set up. So I call it Alexio follower uh, to kind of follow you know uh, continue with the leader mm -hmm. follower um, type of uh, terminology there. And uh, what else? Oh, and then, uh, yeah, so let's get to the shared configurations from here. So that's basically all you need to know for the leader and follower uniquely. Now let's go about what we actually need for both uh, leader and follower to have in there. So both leader and follower actually, and all the followers need to have the Alexio master dot host name um, config. And that's gonna be pointing to Alexio leader in this case, because that's the host name that I've, I've set inside of uh, my Docker compose file as the kind of host name. This could be an IP address if you're, you know, talking about real life, or this could be, you know, yet again, you know, like a kind of a DNS host name that you've configured for uh, on your network for your, um, the master node of, of Alexio. So um, the rest of these here are our MinIO configs. So you're gonna to wanna to set the endpoint uh, and, and Minayo requires using a HTTP protocol on port 9000. Um, so that's gonna be the Alexio under FS S3 endpoint. Um, and then you're going to, again, do the same S3. Disable DNS buckets equals true. That's uh, a special one for AWS S3. If, that, if those are not um, uh, disabled, then it's going to try to uh, treat the um, buckets as if you are talking to an AWS S3 bucket. So, um, so that's why, uh, you know, th that will be treated differently and you can just disable that, that functionality for AWS S3. And then, um, under FS S3 inherit ACL equals false. Um, actually think that this one is, yeah, just basically trying to say that if your pa parent to child, uh, is going to get whatever you set at the top root layer, uh, uh, and ultimately move around those, those, you know, modification properties or access control, uh, prop properties. Um, so, so that we're setting to false. That's just based on the recommendation of, of, uh, Alexio. And then you have these two, uh, this is, you know, the, the kind of, uh, username password essentially for your, your AWS. And so we set that as well in the configurations for the Docker file, uh, for, for MinIO. And this allows, uh, you know, essentially allows Luxio to have access to write and update data uh, to, to MinIO. Um, and then this last one here is a demo only config. Uh, I've basically just removed uh, security authorization from Alexio, uh, and this is just for demonstration purposes only. You should not do this really in practice uh, or, or, or production or anything like that, um, or even in your CI/CD. Um, so this this would in general be something you would want to make sure is consistent with whatever whatever you're doing in production, um, and this makes it where you don't have to log in or have any you know uh, kind of inherit or making sure that you're not impersonating or doing anything from the uh, whoever owns certain files, that kind of thing. So definitely something you want to keep enabled, uh, for real, real life. 
Okay. Um, so I go into a little bit of uh, descriptions about, uh, you know, kind of what uh, those, those are doing here. And then ultimately, now that you understand that, that's really it. I mean, uh, we can just go ahead and, and run some services. And again, I'll, before we go hop right into that, let me just go showcase anything I may have kind of missed here. Uh, so when you look at the Docker Compose, you're going to see, you know, there's going to be Trino coordinator running. Trino works as both the um, coordinator and the the worker nodes uh, in this particular case. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just like any other of these uh, demonstrations that I have throughout here. Um, we're going to have two Alexio nodes. So this is the Alexio leader and this is the Alexio follower. And again, these are where all those configuration properties that we just covered, it gets you know set into an environment variable called Luxio Java Ops, and that overrides everything. Uh, we've of course exposed these ports. Um, we have this shared memory size just on the follower because the follower is going to be doing a lot of the work. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much all we have to know. The only other thing we have to know is you know command for Luxio is master. The other one command for the follower is worker. Um, then we have the rest of the stuff that's very similar to how I have this set up for Iceberg or, or Hive. You know, you have uh, for Hive Metastore, you know, you're going to be basically having a backup database as well as the Hive Metastore service running. And that's that's run just like any any other one. So that Hive Metastore basically holds the metadata that maps your files uh, up to SQL statements, essentially uh, something that could be understood or uh, digested as, you know, rows and, and, uh, and tables and things like that. Um, one th small little bit about the Hive Metastore though, uh, I do, you do have to actually like pull down the Alexio shaded jar client because ultimately uh, when you're executing uh, basically updates and changes to the Hive Metastore, uh, there will be some actions that the Hive Metastore has to take as a client uh, to to talk to MinIO uh, and actually uh, write certain bits of data back. So that's just an aside, but you, you will have to have uh, the Alexio Shaded client uh, put into the, um, the path of the Hive uh, install directory. So uh, so you can kind of see how, how that's done there. MinIO, pretty much all the same as, as all the other uh, projects. This MinIO setup uh, simply just creates an Alexio uh, directory, which is the uh, directory to which we will be uh, by default mounting uh, the data. And, and again, that that is set uh, right here in this Alexio master mount table root UFS. So by default, we're gonna be uh, creating an Alexio um, bucket inside of MinIO, and then that bucket will ultimately get mapped in as the you know root layer. So feel free, I hope that explanation makes sense, feel free to kind of po poke around in this Docker Compose and kind of get a better understanding of it before you know jumping right in and just clicking the magic word. But the, all that setup you know, has led us to simply being able to click the magic uh, Docker Compose up dash D. So let's go ahead and run that over here. Um, so we're, we're in here at our, uh, you know, at, at this top level Trino getting started. Let's go ahead and hop into Iceberg. And then um, from Iceberg, we want to hop into the Trino dash Alexio. And then once we're in here, we can actually, let me, so we can actually see we're in that same directory that I was just showing you with this readme in here comp ets and uh, uh, docker compose. And so uh, in, once we're in here in this directory where the docker composes, let's go ahead and run the magic, oops, not docker compose. We want to set docker compose up dash D. That's the magic uh, incantation. So this is going to run uh, nine services and then your MC service, uh, when it runs, it's going to, uh, going to uh, fall out. So, or it's actually going to, uh, you know, die. So when you look at Compose, once it's done doing what it's doing, actually, it's supposed to die. So um, we can actually do Docker Compose PS. And uh, let me uh, minimize this just a little bit. So not everything is uh, crazy, but you'll see that only one should be have exited, right? MC should have exited. And then Trino coordinator is still starting. Uh, let's do one more PS to actually see uh, if still starting. So it should be uh, running here in just a short amount of time. I'm gonna um, clear that out and we'll 
go back in here. Um, and from here, uh, I'm going to actually, um, here, let me see. Let's go back to our setup here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and actually uh, exec uh, right into uh, the Trino coordinator. So this uh, basically may, means that we're going to um, uh, run, in a, run a command, which is an interactive terminal on this container, which is where Trino is running. And then we're going to run the Trino command on that, which is going to literally take us to the command line interface for, for Trino. Um, oh, and I put the wrong one. Let me docker compose. And we're gonna do PS one more time. And then I'm just going to type that all out. Docker container exec IT. This looks like I'll have to fix that before, but you should be able to log into either of the two really. Oops, that wasn't what I was trying to do. So you should be able to log into the Trina coordinator and then use the Trino CLI. And now it gets us into Trino now, so great. Um, so now we have, uh, and let me bring this up just even a little bit bigger so we can keep seeing. Um, so here, you know, let's just look uh, at a quick amount of the catalogs that we have. Um, we really want to ultimately pull data from a generated catalog like TPCH, uh, which is the um, kind of benchmarking data that we have that we can just automatically generate out of, out of Trino. And we need to ultimately put that into Iceberg. So, um, so we have our Iceberg catalog here. We have TPCH or TPCDS if you wanted to do something bigger, um, but TPCH is gonna be doing just fine for, for our example here. So, um, so what we're gonna do, uh, we talk a little bit about the schemas and, and, I, and I already went into a little bit about how we create the Alexio uh, setup. Let's um, uh, go ahead and take a look real fast at that actually. So um, there, let's, pardon me. We want to go into the, there's the Trino UI. We wanna go into, where is it? Wait for it. I thought I had the MinIO Min UI somewhere on here. There we go. Here's the MinIO UI and then the Alexio UI. We want to go into two of these. So the same way we have the username and password. So it's going to be MinIO, MinIO123. And again, this is set by uh, a configuration that I have in the Docker Compose file uh, that you'll see. So you'll, you'll, you'll see it in there. And so right now we have this bucket, this Alexio bucket that was created, but there's literally just nothing inside of it. Um, likewise, you know, we have this, uh, Alexio set up here, uh, but there's no, uh, and there's actually some weirdness with the, uh, when, when Alexio connects to, uh, S3 that when there's nothing in it, it says it's unable to reach the API endpoint for this page. I think it's because there's no root, uh, created yet for, for this page, uh, even though that's the, the bucket itself is created. So that's fine. Uh, oh, and, and, you know, clear to make things very, very clear, right? Here's the mount point. So at the root of Alexio, it points directly to this S3 colon uh, forward slash forward slash Alexio uh, location. So that's that's the one to one ratio on Alexio. So this is where you know anytime you talk to any any query engine now can talk to that mounting point of root, and now it's going to actually talk directly to to MinIO, right? Um, so anything you write underneath that will write underneath this Alexio directory or sorry, bucket inside of uh, MinIO. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and, and actually get started on and actually running these uh, queries. So first we need to create a schema. So this schema is actually gonna point to, um, we're gonna call it the lake house schema. So say everything that, that's sitting in our lake house, we want it to, to you know, fit underneath the schema. So we'll just create a, a, a directory called lake house. So that way we know that whatever is getting created from the schema level will also correlate to the directory level inside of our file system. So, um, so let's go ahead and run that. So let's create schema, iceberg lake house with the location. And here's again where we have to, where we're actually telling Trino, here's where you find Alexio's service. Now go ahead and create a schema uh, at that location. So we go ahead and create that and creates the schema. Wonderful. So what's changed here? Has anything changed on, uh, on this? 
No, it actually that's intended because uh, nothing. Uh, if we go back here, same same problem, right? Nothing's showing up in the browse. Um, that's intended because uh, until there's actually data or a folder with an actual file uh, being written, uh, Alexio uh, will not write that that information to uh, to um, will not write a, a empty directory essentially into the file system. So let's go on to the actual spot where we're going to actually create. Um, a uh, uh, an actual uh, table, and so I wanted to show you all this, especially if you all are from the Alexio crew that that hadn't really played with Trino much. Um, if you open up Trino's uh, uh, web UI, so again, uh, all of these are links inside of the the README. Um, you don't have to use any particular login name. You could call it Fred. Or you can call it Trino. I always just try to type Trino just out of habit, but it could be anything really. So this actually gives you a vis uh, visual uh, kind of visibility onto your cluster or, uh, queries that you're running. So we have you know UI for MinIO, UI for Alexio, and, and UI for uh, for Trino going now. Let's actually run this query. Let me clear this out again. It's a very nice CLI, by the way. You can actually clear things out and, and it's gonna do that. So you have that query running. That's actually showing up in here now. We could even type and click into the query and get more uh, kind of in-depth information uh, around uh, you know, what actually happened with this query. It's nothing too incredibly major. It's just pulling from one data source and moving into another, but uh, it's still something, right? So it's something fun to look at. Um, so now we've, what we've actually done here is we've, uh, done a C task statement. So create table as, so create table, um, we're creating a table in iceberg lake house, the schema that we just created. And we are actually at the customer level now. So we're going to create a table called customer because, uh, we're actually going to be creating the table, pulling from data, you know, creating it as, um, a select statement from TPCH, which is the generated benchmark data, tiny. Uh, which is the, it's just the size. So we're going to go with a, a small size of customer data and, uh, and then dot customer. And that's going to pull out into uh, this location that we've specified here under Lake House customer. And it's going to be in the ORC format. So, um, so all of that is uh, what that query just did. And it's just pulling data from one source to another. So now that we have data in there, we really should expect to start seeing uh, actual files show up in both Alex Alexio this is great. Luxio shows a lake house, lake house underscore customer. Um, and then it shows everything that you would see from a, an iceberg standpoint. So there's the metadata, which is kind of uh, giving us a lot of the information about ranges of data, um, the snapshots that we're on, uh, different things from, a, from all that iceberg stuff. And just so it's clear, we are, this does work on iceberg. Um, and then we have the, the data itself, which is the actual ORC file that contains the, the raw you know, data sitting in there. So, um, so that's great. It's sitting in memory. Uh, and according to this persistent state, it's already persisted. So we should expect to see this uh, sitting now here in MinIO. And sure enough, Lakehouse, customer, all those files are, are persisted now back here into MinIO. So, okay, that's great. Now that that's happened, uh, we should be able to just, you know, run a query on this and just get some data back. Great. So, okay. So that, that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, but I mean, kind of question that might be running in your mind is this is actually, you know, pull from memory or what's the actual, you know, kind of benefit to having this, if this, you know, what happens if I just delete this whole, uh, Alexio data? So, uh, and just make sure that it's actually pulling from memory. So remember again, we have this stored in two locations. It's stored in memory over here on Alexio and uh, stored in MinIO. So let's just go ahead and delete this. Uh, you wouldn't want to do this in, in reality, but <laughs> uh, you, you could do this over here in, in MinIO. And uh, there, you know, if you accidentally did this, there's obviously uh, some method or way to probably, you know, uh, essentially recover this from Alexio as well. Um, but Let's just say this something like this happened. A uh, bad process got in, into the mix, and uh, and now the data, the persistent data is gone. Well, now we can go back here and still see that this still exists. Now, unfortunately, the persisted state uh, won't isn't going to get updated after you delete it because it's just going to say, "Hey, I've already persisted this data. Uh, I'm not going to really be you know doing these checks to make sure that the data is still sitting in the under FS." So, but this data still exists there. So, even though we've de deleted the data in MinIO. Uh, let's see if you know we, if we could still run that same query and get uh, data back. And so, sure enough, here we are. We still have data in the cache, and uh, and so that's that's kind of the 
proof in the pudding, I guess you could say, that we've actually successfully uh, added this this layer that sits in between. Um, what am I trying to go to here? Uh, <laughs> I added too many things. Uh, I'm trying to go over here. So this perfect little you know caching layer that sits in between Trino and and MinIO here. Um, and if you think about the broader implications of of something like this, it's pretty cool. It's it's kind of uh, anytime you have these this you know uh, you have multiple compute engines and you have multiple storage engines, you start to draw lines between each of these boxes, and it can get very complicated. You have to connect Spark to one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, different storage engines, uh, and then you have to. Uh, you know, then connect Trino to it. You have to connect Hive to it, PyTorch, TensorFlow. And it, you can start seeing the, the kind of complex graph that starts to uh, fill up there. Whereas, um, you know, it, having something like Luxio in the middle of all that uh, kind of makes it to where all of these five only have to point now to Luxio to kind of give you that one-stop shop for, for data access uh, to, you know, everything and, and everything that you need to access will fall under one, one uh, you know, kind of uh, orchestration layer. And then the storage, um, you know, only is, is getting access through uh, one means and one means only. And you can do a lot of cool things like logging and, and security checks and validation on the Alexio level and, and, and essentially enforce that there. And then, of course, I think the big one that everybody kind of thinks first and foremost with Alexio too is having all of that cached files. You know, all this, all this data, you know, all of these are different data centers all across the space. As long as your compute and is really, you know, proximal to your Alexio cluster, then you're going to have a lot of speed, a lot, lot more speed up uh, of, of being able to read over. And even in some cases, you might even consider, you know, running Alexio on the same exact nodes uh, of some of these compute engines uh, if they're one by one. Now, if they're sharing, of course, you want to maybe keep that external. Uh, but uh, for the most part, that's that's basically what we want to show you today. A very simple, basic setup of you know, Trino plus Alexio and why you want to use it and how you can set it up. Um, all of this code is, is again, uh, available on the Trino getting started um, uh, repo. And it's just sitting underneath Iceberg and this Trino Alexio Iceberg MinIO. Uh, you can, you know, check out all of the uh, readme there to kind of get you started and going. And then there's even further uh, reading in these resource files right here. So uh, with that, thanks and uh, hope you have fun.